Before we get this show on the road, I'd like to remind you all that I'm entering into the Football Content Awards for three different categories. Now, of course, it's high risk that the Football Content Awards don't actually go ahead because of the coronavirus. However, that's not stopping me from uh, telling you all to go and vote for me because what if it actually does go ahead and what if I don't end up getting a night out at the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium? The categories that I've gone for are best club content creator international, best young content creator and of course best in video. Also tag me on the respective posts on the Football Content Awards Instagram accordingly. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the video. Hey guys, Gogsy here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've been joined by Simon Ramsden. Thank you very much for coming no in today. Problem. I would like to emphasise this video was shot in 2019. Uh, so we could actually shake hands without anyone raising any eyebrows and uh, it's been a while hasn't it? It's I mean, been a while eh? You're actually in the OG interview with Stephen Hamill and Craig Muir in the background just enjoying what was going on yeah, that's right. with Mark O'Brien. That's Mind a while that. back in it, yeah. Yeah, I embarrassed myself by not doing no, my homework. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, today hopefully I've done a wee bit more. So uh, since you've now hung up the boots. Uh, what is it you do in an average week of Simon Ramsden's life? Uh, a bit of everything really. I've got three kids now which I didn't have when I was playing for Motherwell so that takes up a lot of time obviously. Um, I'm in a car business with a few other lads so that's quite full on. Um, Got another sort of drink supplement business thing that's going on, so that's just another side track. And I've got a season ticket for Sunderland, so me and my oldest daughter we go to most of the matches. So so. You can't complain really. They actually get no. to see your own team play. Yeah, that's it. I mean, uh, it's gone full circle because I had a season ticket from being like five year old. Um, obviously, went to watch Sunderland home and away. And now my career's ended. I can, mm. uh, can go, go back, back to, to the matches and be a fan as you like again I yeah. when I was doing my research on uh, Wikipedia of all reliable sources I saw uh, you made one appearance for Sunderland from 2001 to 2004 mm -hmm. but you scored five goals over the span of the three years it said on the website can you explain this impressive return no I don't know who's put that on but I definitely <laughs> haven't scored five for Sunderland I wish I had but, um, it's a better return than Gary Bennett I know but uh, <laughs> no I mean Fortunately, I was lucky enough to play for the team that I love, so it was only for a short spell, one game uh, in the FA Cup at Ipswich, but it's... But you won the game. We won the game 2-0. I came on, I'll say to see it out, but I don't, yeah. I don't think I even <laughs> touched the ball, to be honest. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's something I can be proud of, I suppose. After uh, you got let by... After Grimsby let you sing for Rochdale, mm -hmm. uh, how did it feel to come back to the Manors and score twice in a 4-0 win? Yeah, it was a bit surreal to be honest, because I don't, I'm not like, yeah, not I don't that. score very often. Uh, to score twice, in fact, before that, I signed for Rochdale and we played Grimsby the following week and I scored an overhead kick. So <laughs> that was like a bit weird, because I think, that, I think that was my first ever league goal. So anyway, I scored against them within a week or two of signing. And then we played them again, like you said there, and I scored another two. Um, so to score three goals against your club was a bit strange when I'm not. Do you have any clips of that? Yeah, you have uh, to say that. I'll have to find. I don't even know if it's on the internet or what have you. I'm not sure, but yeah, scored three against. Grimsby, Unfortunately, I couldn't weird. find much apart from a nah. certain goal for Motherwell. We'll nah. get onto later. Yeah. When you got first approached by uh, Stuart McCall about playing in Scotland, what was your first reaction? Uh, well. Going back from that, I, he signed me for Bradford. So mm -hmm. when I left Rochdale, I played for Stuart. Um, I think he was there maybe a year and a half of my time at Bradford. Mm -hmm. And he was the best manager I played under. So when the opportunity came um, to come up and look, hopefully work under him again, it, w it was a no-brainer for me. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I came up for that pre-season, um, went away to Portugal. Basically, Stuart knew what I was capable of, but he wanted me to prove myself injury-wise because I'd been had a few injury problems the mm -hmm. season before. But I came up done well pre-season, and he signed me. So yeah, I was I was over the moon. So that solitary strike from Motherwell at Tannadice, mm. can you remember much about it? 
I can. Um, I think it might have been Lionel crossed in. I'm not mm -hmm. sure, but you did. Yeah, but uh, no, I, then I just remember in. just running in the box and just catching it. All right, I suppose, it, but it didn't really count for anything on the day because we got beat. Yeah. And um, that that was one of the most frustrating games I'd seen that season because mm. I thought we actually played all right. I'd, yeah, we did, but that sort of summed up that season. It we did. we played well in spells, but we didn't seem to get the points that we maybe deserved at times. Mm -hmm. uh, at least it ended in a win against Rangers. So. Very true. Well, I mean, I didn't uh, start that game, but yeah, it was uh, it was a good win for the club. Mm -hmm. I've been informed about a certain race night at an electric bar in Motherwell. <laughs> <laughs> when Which one? There was a when it was uh, Keith Lasley's testimonial, Aye. can you inform us what happened that night? Yeah, there's a few stories to come out of that night. I remember Fraser Kerr getting up and singing Barbie Girl, <laughs> uh, which questioned his sexuality. Um, well, I think we all did. <laughs> yeah, so that was one uh, time I can remember. I'm sure I remember Stuart Carswell throwing, playing darts and Craig Moore putting his hand up and trying to avoid them and things like that. It was a bit of a crazy night, but I think what you're referring to is maybe uh, me getting me tattoo out, was it possibly, or not? Or was it a different style? Uh, I don't know. Peter Elder told me that the well boys were saying, Simon, get your balls out or yes, something. Yes, that's right, yeah. <laughs> so I think uh, Derek uh, had nothing on on the table and wanted me to get my, uh, my balls out like so. It would be uh, rude of me not to, wouldn't it? Like, <laughs> oh, absolutely, especially in Motherwell. If you could make a five-side team of players you've played alongside in your career, who'd be in it and why? Mm. Um, that's a good question. I'd put Darren Randolph in goal. Oh, 100%. without question. Best keeper I've ever seen playing a Welsh rap. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've played with some good keepers, but Daz had, had a lot. And obviously, yeah. you can see what he's done since Motherwell and mm. Ireland's number one now. It's just a shame we never got a fee for him. That's the yeah. one thing. But he was not only a class keeper, but a class lad as well. Great mm. teammate. Um, so Daz would be in goal. Um, are we talking Motherwell players here or just anyone? Throughout your whole career? Uh, see, it's a tough one because although I played at Sunderland, I don't really class myself as... Like a first team regular? Yeah, player. so although I trained with some... If someone ever said to me, who's the best player you ever played with? I would say Kevin Phillips. Because he was frightening but I didn't actually make a league appearance alongside him or what have you mm. I just trained with him mm -hmm. pretty much every day um, but if that counts he would be in it 100% <laughs> well, um, you can have him in if you want I'll have him in um, Faddy oh yeah Faddy's the daddy um, <laughs> Faddy when I mean when I came in like we were talking about that pre-season to mm. prove himself Faddy was just in just training to keep himself ticking over mm. Um and then obviously we know from there he ended up coming back to the club and he was phenomenal that season. Uh, some of the games... That was, that I think that was the last season he actually had it uh, before he ended up losing that extra yard at pace. Mm, possibly. I mean, that season, some of the performances he put in on goals oh. and and stuff, it was just like... yeah, it was Like against it, Hearts, the 4-1 win, three assists and a goal as well. I mean, there was numerous games that season. Mm. Um, my memory's not as probably as good as yours on some of them, but yeah, I just remember uh, some of the tricks he did and goals and assists. It was just it was a joy to play with. Yeah. Um, so he he would be in there. Uh, so how many is that leaving? You've got Daz, got Faddy. Daz, Faddy, and Kevin Phillips. That's not a bad start, <laughs> is it? I'll just play the back by himself. <laughs> um, I'll put Hutchie in at centre half right. with me. Uh, Jordan. We had a bit of a love hate relationship <laughs> because he's obviously a Mag, well, Newcastle fan. Don't know what Mags are. Um, but we hit it off, we got on great. Yeah. And uh, I think we just complimented each other, to be fair, on and off the pitch. Like that that season. Or uh, you could see it's a good we, partnership. We played together, yeah. Like, probably both a little bit crazy. Like, But he would he put his head in anywhere. You know what he's like. And um, mm -hmm. I just enjoyed playing alongside him. Just yeah. We just always would just ah, get stuck into people and yeah. we just loved it. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd put Hutchie in alongside me as well. So that's Daz, yourself and... Me, Mark. Hutchie, so uh, Faddy, Faddy, Kevin Phillips. <laughs> that is That'll something. Do. So uh, who are the most difficult footballers you've played against? I mean, for me, I wasn't one of the tallest of players. So mm. when I was playing centre-half, if you're coming up against a big six-foot-four lad or what oh, have you, I'd often find that a lot more 
challenging. Leave that game than, to Archie. Than even like a quicker one. Yeah, leave it. Yeah, leave it to Archie. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I don't think there's one player that springs to mind where I'm like had nightmares about in my career. Mm -hmm. Obviously, mm -hmm. there's been many a time where people have got the better of me and I've got the better of them. But I think because of my lack of height. Um, not so much at right back because when I was playing there, yeah. you're up against a tricky winger the majority of the time. But at centre half, if you're playing against a big target man, um, pro that would probably cause me the most problems. Mm. I would say. So you, of course, made your debut in the Champions League mm. from other. Yeah. How was that in terms of a step up from like playing in the lower leagues of England? The whole experience was a bit surreal, to be honest. It was great. Like obviously coming up and signing for the club, I only signed maybe a week, ten days uh, before that actual game. So there was a massive build up to that match, um, the excitement all around the town and then coming at the game and seeing like all the fans doing like a march up to the stadium oh. and it it was just it was something else. Um now actually the game itself, I thought we played really well. Um, we did. First half, Could I know they the effort. was it one nil at half time I think. Uh, yeah, it was a goal in each half unfortunately. I think from a set pace but I think overall, mm -hmm. it wasn't as if it was backs against the walls and no. I was thinking, Jesus, these are some outfit like and I'm oh, struggling. Definitely. I think if you ask anybody in our team who played that night, we all felt comfortable out there oh, and, yeah. and give as good as we got. It was just, like I say, the difference in the boxes, they scored, we didn't. So. And I mean, this was a Greek side, Parathenaikos, who have a pedigree in Europe yeah. as well. So it was, no, it was a it. tough draw, but. I thought we handled ourselves very well and unfortunately the heat sort of got the better of us in the away game yeah, as well. Yeah, I think the away game I thought we played alright as well, which yeah. sounds crazy we when got, we got, got beat. got to 0-0 at half time yeah. away in Greece. So. Exactly. Um, so no, I think I think a lot of the lads in our team uh, can be proud of the performance in, the, in that in two legs. It was mm. just obviously their class shone a little bit in, oh, in the goals and what have you. So having ground talked quite a lot uh, in your career. Uh, what would you say is the best ground you've played at? Uh, apart from Sunderland. Apart from, uh, apart from the stadium away? Wembley, I would Wembley. say. Wembley was, it was in a playoff final. Uh, we didn't win, but just to say I played at the new Wembley was a good experience. Mm -hmm. um, Panathinaikos was a great mm -hmm. experience Levante. playing in that ground. I didn't play at Levante, oh, but obviously I was at the club then. Yeah. Um, Ibrox and Park had great mm. stadiums to play at. Uh, there's been quite a few, but I would say Wembley's probably the standout one for me, yeah. the experience yeah. of running out there. It's every kid's dream to play. Yeah, that's it. Final question. You're in the pick and mix aisle of a sweet shop and can only pick three sweets. What do you choose and why? Sarsaparilla tablets, because it's a bit of a Sunderland thing and when I was a kid, like it's like what your nana gives you and what I've all, right. all day. So <laughs> A lot of people will be thinking, what on earth for them, but try them. Uh, but I'll, I'll give so, it a go. Yeah, so I that, uh, I'm not a massive sh sweet person, but uh, white chocolate, love white chocolate. Mm -hmm. So that would be one. Uh, and some mints of some sort. That would that'd probably be my three choices. Pretty do. boring, but yeah, no, that's, that's about it. That's absolutely fine. Thank you very much yeah, for well uh, coming in, and I hope to see you at another old game very soon. Yeah, cheers, mate. Right. Thank you. Thank you.